Hello there, Mr. Wilson here again for what is part six of going through this June 2023 GCSE Maths Paper 2 by Edexcel. Now, if you haven't already, definitely check out all the other parts because we go to question 14. And in this part, we're going to start on question 15. So, here are the first four terms of a quadratic sequence. Find an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this sequence for three marks. Okay, whenever I see an, uh, a sequence question, especially an nth term question, I'm always thinking, how much does that sequence go up by? That's going to be a key uh, thing in this uh, question. So, let's start by writing out the sequence again. I'm going to work out how much does it go up each time. So it goes up by 6, then by... Um, why am I struggling so much? 8, and then by 10. Well, that took way longer than I thought. Now, obviously, these numbers are not going to be the same because we call this the first difference. And the first difference, if that was the same, it would be a linear sequence. But this is not a linear sequence. It is a quadratic sequence. So I wasn't expecting the first difference to be the same. Well, the second difference, as it's referred to, is the difference of the difference. So it is the difference of the numbers you've just worked out. So here the difference is 2, and the second difference is 2 again. We would expect the second difference to be the same if it is a quadratic sequence, which obviously we knew that because we were told in the question that it was a quadratic sequence. Now, here's how it works. Here's the, the step that every student misses because it is such a tiny, insignificant step but has massive effects if you don't follow it through. You half the second difference... And that is the coefficient of the n squared term. Now, and there's a lot of questions you might be asking here. Why do we have an n squared term in this sequence? Well, quadratic, quadratics is squared. So I know there must be an n squared term somewhere in my nth term. But it might be 1n squared. It might be 2n squared, 3n squared, 4n squared. And what decides that is half the second difference. In this case, half of 2 is 1. So it's just n squared. Now, what does n squared actually mean? Well, n squared means 1, 4, 9, 16. It's the squared numbers. Now, that, if we just left it as n squared, that is not our sequence, right? Our sequence is 3, 9, 17, 27. So we're sort of nowhere near the, the actual sequence. So how are we going to get the actual sequence? Well, what we could do is we could, say, take our original sequence, let's call it s, and we could subtract the squared numbers to figure out what is the difference between these two sequences. Like, what number will take me from 1 to 3? Well, it's 2. You add 2. 4 to 9, you add 5. 9 to 17, you would add um, 8. And 16 to 27, you would add 11. So all I've done is I've done the numbers in this sequence take away the numbers in this sequence. Or in other words, found the difference between these two sequences. And I get this. Now, there's something unique about these numbers I've just written down. Is that this is a linear sequence, right? It goes up by 3 each time, right? You add 3 each time to get the next term. So I know what the nth term of this is because I am a very, very capable mathematician and I'm sure you are too watching this video. So we know what the nth term of a linear sequence is. So just ignore everything that's come before it and just focus on that sequence. What is the nth term of 2, 5, 8, 11? Well, it goes up by 3, so it must be 3n. And the 3n is the 3 times table, 3, 6, 9, 12. Well, how do I go from 3, 6, 9, 12 to 2, 5, 8, 11? I have to subtract 1. Ooh, not subtract 11, subtract 1. So that is the nth term of this bit. So in other words, we know that our sequence... Our original sequence is a combination of n squared, this sequence, and this 3n minus 1 that we've just worked out. Because if you add these two numbers together, 1 and 2, 4 and 5, 9 and 8, 16 and 11, you get 3, 9, 17, 27. So because our sequence is the combination of these two sequences, our nth term is going to be the combination of those nth terms. So in other words, the nth term of our original sequence is n squared plus 3n take away 1. It's a combination of the quadratic part along with the linear part 
of our sequence. Now this is probably the most difficult type of quadratic sequence that you could be asked, where you've got a basically a quadratic and a linear sequence combined into one. But the process is very similar for a lot of these questions. So as long as you follow the process, almost like an algorithm for a computer, then it's the same thing every time. So I would highly recommend that with this topic in particular, the more practice is definitely going to be beneficial because the more practice you do, the more you get used to the types of questions that they could be asking you. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next question, which is question 16. Ah, histograms. I like histograms. So, the histogram gives the information about the number of hours some students used their phones last week. The histogram is incomplete. So it gives you some stuff here. 28 students used their phone between 30 and 40 hours, and 28, uh, 24 students used their phones between 40 and 60 hours. Use this information to complete the histogram. Okay, well, you'll notice straight away that there is no scale on the y-axis. So right now we can't plot anything new because we don't know what the frequency density is. Now, just as a reminder about histograms, unlike a bar chart, a bar chart is where the height of the bar tells you the frequency. A histogram doesn't work like that. A histogram is the area of the bar is the frequency which is a huge difference, which is why we don't plot frequency on the y-axis, we plot frequency density on the y-axis. So, in other words, if the area of the bar is the frequency, and we are told 28 students, 28 students use their phone between 30 and 40 hours, well, that must mean that the area of this bar between 30 and 40 must be 28, because that's the frequency. So, in other words, that must mean that the area of that rectangle must be such it must equal 28 well the width must be 10 because it's between 20 and uh, 30 and 40 so the width must be 10 so therefore the height how tall the bar is must be 2.8 because 2.8 times 10 is 28 so in other words this height of this bar is 2.8 and then very quickly you can sort of spot the idea that we must be going up in 0.1s on this scale so this must be 1 this is 0 0.5, this is 1.5, that's 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and then 4. So now that we've filled in our scale, now we can plot our new bar on our histogram. Because we know that the um, 24 students use their phones between 40 and 60. So the area has got to equal 24. Well, the width is 20. So I would do 24 divided by the class width, we call it, which is 20. And that will give me 1.2. So I know I need to draw a bar of 1.2 tall and between 40 and 60. And that is going to be my bar there. Now you could double check by multiplying the length and the width of the bar. Well, the, length, uh, the width is 20, the height is 1.2. 1.2 times 20 is 24. So I'm pretty happy with uh, with that answer there. So it's about using the information to find this, the frequency density scale and then once you know that then being able to fill in that, that extra bar. A very nice question. I feel like a lot of the questions to do with histograms have gotten a, a lot more interesting in recent years. Examiners have been very clever about the way that they ask questions on histograms rather than just saying here's a histogram, go plot it, they're, they're making them a little bit more complicated and becoming a bit more creative. And I quite like that, but I know for a lot of students it can be quite confusing. But I do quite like this question. It's a good question. No students use their phone for more than 60 hours. Work out the total number of students for two marks. Well, if no students use their mo mobile phone more than 60 hours, that must mean that everything is contained within this histogram. Well, we know that the, these two bars are worth 28 and 24 respectively. We just need to work out the frequencies of these other two bars. And again, that just means to work out the area. Well, the value, the height of this bar is 1.6 and the width is 20. So I do 1.6 times 20, which is 32. So that must be the frequency of that. And then to work out the frequency of this bar, well, the width is 10 and the height is 3.6. So 10 times 3.6 is 36. 
So then I just go ahead and I can add up all those numbers. So 32 plus 36 plus 28 plus 24. And that's going to give me 120 on the nose, which is quite a satisfying answer. So 120 is going to be my answer for this one. So again, I can just write down my, my working out if I want to down here, but I don't want to keep sort of scrolling back and forward. So I'm just going to write down my final answer as 120. So yeah, a really interesting histogram question. I always love it when the question isn't as sort of as simple as what you might think. It takes a little bit more thought to get your head around what the question is actually asking for. But yeah, absolutely love that question. Really good question. Like I said, I think examiners have got a lot better recently at uh, writing questions about histograms uh, rather than just saying plot it. Okay then, I am going to leave it there for this part. I want to try and keep it short and sweet. So if you've enjoyed this video, definitely check out all the other videos on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And all I want to say is thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.